Hi guys, this is Yuri, welcome to the channel. And this video is all about the new Kia Niro. And this particular vehicle is the Kia Niro Hybrid. And this is the HEV version of the Earth Edition for New Zealand market. And so I'll show you all the features about this particular vehicle. I'll leave all the timestamps down below so you can skip forward if you wish to know um, different things over, over the video. And uh, if you're interested in any other videos, please make sure you subscribe and like. And um, that would be really appreciated. Uh, I'll turn the camera around, I'll go through all the features. All right, first thing is the vehicle car key. So because this is the sort of entry or the second entry model, you have the manual key blade that just press the button that opens the key blade up. On the top, we have lock button. The wheel mirror will go in and unlock button. The wheel mirror will unlock. And then if you do want to individually only unlock the tailgate, you can push and hold the third button that allows you to only unlock the tailgate, even if the vehicle is locked. For example, push and hold. Because this is only the Again, not the highest spec, so it only comes with the manual tailgate. That means all your doors remain locked, where your boot is easy access. For the boot, you get the puzzle shelf on the top. You can take this off if you don't need it, the, 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 um, the cover. Underneath, we have the space saver, so that's in using the market, plus all the tire fixing and tools, everything. And you can drop this low if you wish to give you a little bit more space. That's a little bit boot floor, a little bit gap. But if you want a flash, sort of nice flat floor, you can just lift this up. If you do want to drop the seat, that's pull on each end. It's 40 60 split for the seat drop. At the back, you get tethering points, or at the front, you get SO fix point. Is that pretty easy? To close the tailgate, just push all the way, just like that. And now we want to unlock the vehicle. From the back, you get baby lock over here. So if you do want to use baby lock, you just use the menu key to twist on left. That means no one from inside will be unlocked the vehicle. Well, unlock the doors, by the way. And seat belt is over here, adjustments, uh, which is the boot, I'm um, sorry, the, the rear seats is on the top. And we get armrest over here, in case you need to use that. Now air vent to the back. The USB charging is not underneath. Instead, it's on the seats. So it's on each end. Uh, behind the seats, it's all USB-C these days, so or Type-C, in case you have anything, just buy a Type-C cable in, in the future. And open the driver door, we have the bonnet release over here, if you just pull that, you can release the bonnet to check anything. This is the fuel box, uh, fuse box, in case you want to access to anything, but again, you can leave it to Kia technicians for that. And on the driver's seat, we have manual adjustments on the, this particular version. So this goes up or down. This recomb the back, forward and backwards. This slide and forward and backwards. That's pretty easy. And on the driver door, we have the door handle over here. And we have the window control front and the back. This version only in the driver door window is auto go up and down. You do have a auto lock for the rear uh, passenger windows in case you have a young passenger at the back. You can lock, uh, unlock, uh, unlock and lock the vehicle for central locking. You can do um, rear mirrors, just go right, go up and down, left and right to adjust the rear mirror. Or we'll push this button to fold in the rear mirror if you wish to, otherwise it'll automatically fold when the vehicle is unlocked anyway. It's locked anyway. And then this has a normal key start, so we're just going to push it in and twist all the way. There we go, the vehicle is on. If you do have the push start, all you need to do is just foot on the brake, press the push button, the vehicle will start, just like that. And on the right hand side, we have the first switch. This is for the headlight leveling. So in case your headlight level is too high or too low, you can use this to go between 0 to 3. 0 is the highest leveling. You will need to use one to two to three if your vehicle is heavily loaded, if you have five people inside or more luggage at the back. Otherwise, if it's just yourself or two of you driving, most of the chase can chances, zero will be fine. The second one is called the 12 volt battery reset. In case your 12 volt battery gets too low, the vehicle automatically shut off or the vehicle doesn't start, you can use this feature, but this is not often used, most likely, so you don't have to use this button unless there is something wrong. The last one is the traction control. You can turn the traction control off if you wish to. Otherwise, in most cases, you don't want to turn the traction control. If the traction control is turned off, you have a yellow light over here. Otherwise, push the button again. No light means your function is available. Your, your traction control is there. Next part, we can talk about the steering control and the, the, um, the, the wiper and all that things behind. So first thing, we have the 
light control. So indicator light is pretty easy. If it's a soft touch, it's gonna it's gonna ring three or six times, depending on how you set it up, or otherwise go all the way. It's gonna it's gonna basically um, beep sort of thing. It's gonna indicate it. And then for the light switch, you can just leave on auto all the time. You have an indication on the top just over there. Otherwise, you can manually switch on the high parking and the low beam if you wish to. Uh, while, the, while the light is on, either auto or light is on, you can use the front fog lights as that switch or rear fog lights as that switch. Otherwise, twist it back and twist it forward to switch off the fog lights if you wish to. Otherwise, most of the cases, we're going to be okay with auto based on that. You can also do the um, high beam assist, just go forward, uh, push and forward to switch on high beam if you wish to, and flashlight by pulling it back to the steering. On the left, we have the windscreen wiper on this vehicle. So this does equip with the auto windscreen wiper. So at the same lever, if the leveling is the same as the indicator, that means the windscreen wiper is off, so it's not switched on. But if you do want to switch it on, you can go, um, first thing, you can go up, it's gonna mist. That means it's only gonna wipe once just like that. If you go down, it's going to go to automatic, as the indication over here. When it's on automatic, when once the rain water builds up, it will wipe automatically based on the rain water you're getting on the front windscreen. At, at, alternatively, you can change the front windscreen and the, what do you call it, the sensitivity. So you can see the bars on the left and you can use this switch, go forward or backwards. You can see the lighting, uh, you can see the switch. That's a, Obviously, on the top is maximum sensitivity, on the bottom, that's lowest sensitivity. So you can decide whether you want a higher or lower once it starts raining by using this switch over here. The next part, we can go low. If you switch to low, it's going to be an automatic set speed. So it's not going to, um, what do you call it? It's not going to do auto rain sensing and keep going. That's high, that means on the highest speed, just like that. So in most cases, you either leave it auto, auto or you either leave it off. That's up to you again. Next part, we have the rear wiper. So at the moment, it's pointing to off. So that means it's completely off. But if you switch to low, the rear wiper will wipe. Start wiping at a certain speed. The rear wiper is not on. Um, what do you call it? Is not on a auto. Um, there's no auto rain sensing for the rear wiper, by the way. So low or high, up to you. Otherwise, off, just like that. And then to watch the front windscreen, you're pulling it against the steering towards the steering, just pull it back and hold. You can watch the front windscreen. If you push all the way forward that direction and hold, you can watch the rear windscreen. But this indication tells, so that's the wiper. So first you have the different driving mode you can select. Um, on this vehicle, you only have two different modes, eco or uh, sport. So you can just push, the, push this button to change whatever you like for the driving mode. On the right hand side, we have the voice command that allows you to um, use your um, Siri or uh, Android Auto or um, sorry, Android um, Google Assistant if your function is connected. But at the moment, if you tap this, it's not going to react. It's going to pop up notification. Um, so that doesn't work until your Siri or Apple CarPlay uh, or Android Auto is connected, basically. Mode that allows you to change your different mode for the music player, either FM or AM or uh, you know, Bluetooth music when you drive the vehicle. These go up and down to change different um, stations or different tracks when you listen to music. These up and down to change different sort of uh, volume. And then push down, you can mute the uh, music in a very quick way. This button allows you to answer the phone call or you can, answer, you can hang up the phone call uh, as well. And then this is the start button. You can personalize this button. We'll talk about later in the small, small uh, screen. And then on the left side, first thing we have the menu adjustment. So you can have different menus in the center. So just tap this button, you can change the different display. So while we're going to display, I'll quickly explain what you have on the display. So this is the same digital dash you have on most of the Kia and um, uh, new vehicles. So first thing is the digital speed on the left. It's permanently displayed. We have the parking brake, CBL warning, stuff like that. This is your fuel tank because it's still a hybrid vehicle. On the left, that means your fuel tank is on the left. And then your bars, everything will go around here, full and empty, obviously. You can see the lighting bars. On the right, that's your rev counter. It shows your revving uh, information. Ready, that means that actually the motor has been switched on. If it doesn't show ready sign, that means your motor hasn't been successfully switched on. Then this is your battery um, information, uh, low or high, depending on your battery charge, um, depending on your driving style, everything. 
On the top, we are on park. At the bottom, we have the speed sign recognition. We have the speedo. We have the odometer. We have the uh, temperature. Everything. These are pretty easy. Um, range to empty. It's about 800 k's to go, but these will fluctuate based on how you drive. Again, okay? and then if you do want to change anything, first thing you can change is by pressing this button. You get different four menus. Allows you to change the display. First thing. Uh, the first thing is called the um, assistant package which display your assistant information um, by going through the land departure warning by going through the uh, what do you call it and the adaptive cruise control information like that so this is your information for those driving assistance next part we have the driving info so the driving info allows you to see the information about you how long you have been running for what's the kilometers what's the running time what's the average consumption and uh, this is your current journey basically if you do want to go to other journeys just press it down you can see since refueling uh, since we refill the tank what's your average consumption again again this is quite high this is not a uh, sort of uh, not a uh, driving unit it's a brand new car so it's only been on the hoist or workshop for quite long then you have accumulated info that means from your reset this is your information at any time, if you do want to reset any of this, just pull, hold and OK, just push and hold. You can reset this all the way to zero, everything. Next one, we have the idle mode. So that allows you to see what the vehicle is running for, if the engine is on, if the EV is on, if the uh, EV is charging, stuff like that. So you have that information. Next one, we have the user settings. So this allows us to set quite a lot of things about all the conditions, about the vehicle controls and all that things. So we'll go through that later. I'll quickly explain the next menu, uh, which is your engine temperature, where you can see and go down. You can see the tire pressure monitoring system equipped on this vehicle. It's going to read out the bars once you start drive, just once you start driving, as the driving display, the temperature of the tires, everything kind of running, gets to normal when you start driving the vehicle. And you can you can see that by the way. So now we want to go back to the last bit, which is your user setting. That allows us to again go in to see the first one. It's called the driving convenience. So if we click that, you can see the first one is called SCC Smart Cruise Control, which is your uh, adaptive cruise control in some other vehicles. So if you press the adaptive cruise control, first thing you can change is distance and all that things. I'll quickly explain how the adaptive cruise control works before we go into settings. First thing, you have all these buttons, these three buttons um, about the adaptive cruise control on some versions or some different markets. You have different buttons located on the right side, by the way. So if you do want to engage the cruise control, first thing, once you start driving, or even if you're idling stationary, you can press this button that allows us to start the cruise control. But at the moment, the cruise control is not going to be set because we're not driving. So you can only do this when you drive. Once you start driving, by pressing this button, it will set at your particular speed, basically. It's going to display on the top dashboard, either 100 or uh, 40k, whichever you are. Then after you set a 100k's or something like that, you can go up. Or down to change your set speed so or you can push and hold or push and hold down to change a little bit aggressively uh, high speed or low speed that means the vehicle will drive on your set speed if the uh, if everything's clear in front of you if you set it 100 the car will try to drive on 100 and while you're driving you can also put, use this button to change the distance there are generally about four distances you can choose just by typing this you will see a distance control on the top that means if your vehicle is driving 100, uh, if your set speed is 100 by the vehicle in front of you, is only traveling at 20k or 40k or 60k, your car will automatically slow down to keep a safe distance, whether the distance, distance is from 1 or 4. So you can change, it can change that distance by using these buttons. And then while you are on cruise control, there are two ways to cancel the cruise control. One way, just apply the brake. Very simple, it will pause the cruise control. And then another way is, if the cruise control is on, you can just push down this button to the pause button. They'll pause the cruise control again. And then if you do want to resume, all you need to do is either push down or up or down to set your cruise control again to the current driving speed or push it down to resume to the previous set speed. So that's how to use the adaptive cruise control, basically. Hope that makes sense. And then if we go into the driving assistance center and we go into the first one, driving convenience, 
which is speed assist, uh, which you adapt to control. First thing, you can change the distance. So this distance is the default setting distance. If you change to three, or change to two, change to one, you or default whenever you switch on the cruise control first distance you're going to choose is three or one or two or four so you can change that that's up to you acceleration so this is um, based on how you want acceleration to be the acceleration means if your vehicle speed drops let's say you, your speed set is 100 but vehicle in front of you is only driving 50 your car will automatically slow to 50 then if the vehicle is goes away to the other line your car will try to resume back to 100 you can change how the acceleration is uh, three obviously medium one is slow five is fast you can change whatever you like based on that now we can go back and next one we have response speed so you can see the response speed by again uh, depends on how you like it you can do the response speed by the vehicle applying the brake either quick or slow um, that's really up to you i think medium is totally okay but if you think it's too heavy or too light when, when it sees the vehicle then you can change that as well that's the brake response you can reset the, uh, the default setting if you wish to otherwise we don't need to do that that's all good and we can go to the next part so driving assistance next one speed the limit so you have the speed limit control which is your display over here that shows the round dial. That round dial will allow the vehicle to scan the speed limit in the area. If you go past by a speed sign, it's going to display at the bottom over there. So if you turn it off, so it's not going to switch on, you can see the um, orange bar over there. So there's nothing basically. But if you see the speed limit warning, SLV, that allows you to actually use the speed limit warning. Um, then if it shows 50, if you drive to an area that is a speed sign property display on the road, it's going to say 50 and this will show 50. And then if you go over the speed limit, it's going to give you either warning or flash, basically. You can change the speed tolerance. And the tolerance means if it's zero kilometers, that means if it's 50 and 50, if you go 51, it's going to give you warning, basically. Then if you don't want the tolerance to be that, how do you say, um, Frequent, you can do 5k or 10k. That means if you if you it's 50 and says 50 here, I mean if you go uh, 60k, then it will give you a tolerance. Basically, give you warning. This is up to you. You can reset it. You can set it up whatever you like. Depends on your situation. The last one is called speed limit assist. What that means is it will read out speed sign 50 or display 50, and then it, the car will physically not allow you to go 50. Uh, that's something I personally don't like, but again, some people may like it. Um, that's up to you. So personally, I will choose the warning, um, which is okay for me to see the speed limit, basically. Next one, we can change the warning volume. You can do low, medium, or high. Again, this is up to you, or you can change it off. Again, that's up to you. Haptic warning, that's the same thing. So in case you want to um, have the steering uh, vibration, you can have it on. Driver attention, then this is on, so that means if the if you're on cruise control or if you're stationary and the vehicle um, the traffic light goes green the front vehicle goes away then you just you're not you are not reacting the vehicle will give you a small indication sound on the top so that helps you with your um with you pick up the uh, pick up the traffic uh swell sway wing warning that's the same that's basically if your vehicle is not in the center not balancing or anything like that it's going to give you a warning just in case you fall asleep or anything like that Next part, driving safety. We have the front safety, so that means when you before you crash into something or someone, it's gonna give you a warning. And it's gonna give you um, what do you call it? It's gonna give you a warning and it's gonna give you braking if necessary. And the warning time, it's gonna be late or normal. You can change that as well. Land safety, which is a land departure warning um, information. So it's over here in case you're driving over 60 kilometers, you're not driving in the center, you're getting close to the lamb, or you're going over the lamb marking. It's going to give you warning, it's going to give you uh, vibration alert and all that things. If you don't want it, you can turn it off. Or another way, we have this button here. We can push and hold this button to turn that off. As every time you switch on the vehicle, that function is ultimately on, which is the gray light over there. So you can push and hold. Just like that, that green light is off. Push and hold it again. That means it's back on. So if it's back on, it'd be gray. It's work. If it's working, it's gonna go green light. If it's not working, it's gonna go orange light. That's that's a quick adjustment for that. 
and then you can have blind spot safety so your blind spot safety is your blind spot detection a, a triangle sign over here if you're driving forward and you there's a vehicle traveling behind you it's going to give you a warning on the blind spot detection safety exit so in case um, in case you're trying to open the door and there's someone traveling behind you it's going to give you a warning on the dash and on the mirror as well and additionally you also have this button that allows you to engage another thing called steering assist so if you engage that button you can see another gray light that came on that means the function is ready to engage again once you start driving on the road the, the vehicle will see the line marking on the left and right instead of using the land departure which only give you warning up only before you go for the marking the steering will try to steer you in the right center you'll feel the steering force go left and right when you start driving basically so again that's up to you whether you want it or not want it it's um, something you can choose basically next one parking safety we have auto pedestrian uh, parking distance so that means if you switch it on you get close to something at the front or at the back it's going to automatically beeps for you as this car does have a um, all-round parking sensor you also have a rear cross traffic alert that means if you are something like parking in between two big cars you're reversing out there's a car traveling on this road it's going to give you a warning around the dashboard around the sorry around the rear mirror so let you know that someone traveling behind you so that's quite a handy feature as well so yeah that's pretty much all about the driving assistance and next we have eco vehicle so you can change the smart um um, recuperation so this is your brake regeneration as well if you do engage this that means when you release the uh, foot off the throttle the car will give you regeneration and the smart regeneration that means it depends on your um, you know regeneration um, you know the battery level so it's going to give you different regeneration depends on your, how your uh, battery level is how efficient you are uh, cluster you can change the cluster theme and uh, that means the first one is the link to driving mode that means if the eco mode is blue sport mode is red that's up to you otherwise if you cancel the um, link to drive mode you can select theme a which is this particular thing theme b this is that theme c this is that yeah so you can change whatever you like really next one wiper lights indication so if you change anything on the wiper and lights it's going to have an indication over here that's personally i my um what i like so i'm gonna have this I see uh, road warnings, so in Oakland, probably not so often, but in other places, if it's really cold, it's going to give you a warning when it's um, road is icy or when the temperature drops too low. Welcome sound, when, which means when you start the vehicle, that's going to give you a welcome sound, just like that. And next, we have lights, so one touch turn indication, so that's your small touch without going all the way, it's going to give you at the moment that's six lights if you don't have five flashes sorry and if you don't have the five flashes you can have three flashes you can have off that's up to you personally i quite like the three flashes so you, you don't have to go all the way and all that things to quickly change your lane headlight time out so that means when you switch out the vehicle or when you unlock and lock the vehicle at night the headlight stays down for about 30 seconds so you can see your driveway and then last one you get a high beam assist that means as long as you switch to auto if the vehicle goes in an area that's completely dark the auto high beam will automate switch on and then when there's traffic coming in coming to you or you're following a vehicle it's going to automatically switch off the high beam basically door you have the central locking so auto lock so you can enable this auto lock either on speed or on shift so if you do shift that means once you're going to drive uh, or reverse or all the central locking will be engaged if you do speed that means when you go i think 15 kilometers per hour it will ultimately lock everything otherwise you can do off so you can manually lock and unlock the car that's up to you auto unlock so you can engage the auto unlock which is on shift to p that means when you come to a stop you put the lever to parking you automatically lock the, uh, unlock the vehicle otherwise key out that means when you switch off the vehicle take the key out then all, all the doors will be unlocked so again this is up to you you can choose whatever you like next one the horn feedback uh, when you lock the vehicle do you want horn feedback personally i don't like it but you can have it on that's just give you a warning that's up to you uh, remote window control so you can actually remote um, dropping the window if you wish to but it only works on the driver window i believe that means in hot summer when you, before you jump in the vehicle you can use the manual key to push the um, push the unlock button and hold your driver door window will drop all the way so you can have a living airflow before you jump in the vehicle and next we have the convenience so the rear occupant alert you can switch it on 
That means when you get out of the vehicle, when you really when you switch off the vehicle and when you switch off the key on the on the warning sign, it's gonna give you a warning, says check your rear passenger or check your rear seats in case you have a young passenger or anything like that. It's a safety warning, it's up to you whether you want it or not. Service interval, you can change the service interval, you can enable the service interval, you can reset the service interval if you wish. Uh, for this vehicle in New Zealand, that's one year or 15,000 kilometers for the service interval. And next, we have welcome mirror. That means uh, when you get close to the vehicle or when you unlock the door, the wind mirror will open up automatically. If you don't select it, that means only when you switch on the engine, the wind mirror will open up automatically. So that's up to you. Next, we have auto wiper in reverse. This is something quite cool when you when you when your wiper is at on or auto position. If you engage this, when you put on reverse, your wiper will automatically wipe about a few times, so you can see the clear view from your rear windscreen. Now, next one, the units. You can change your units for temperature, for fuel saving, for tire pressure, all that things. Um, for New Zealand, that's PSI and all the things degree, so that's okay for now. You don't need to change that. Last one, you can reset the home screen, uh, reset all these settings if you wish, uh, but obviously you have gone through all that, so we don't want to reset. So that's all the settings. There's a lot about the information. And yeah, hopefully that's easy to understand. Now we are going to jump into the middle screen. So this particular version is the sort of entry or second entry model, so it's not going to be fancy steering. So this is very easy to understand. First thing, we actually want to show you everything at the bottom. So these can be used as direct navigation, navigating button through the screen, or you can use this as a quick um, aircon switch. There are two ways. First thing, you will have to know this button. When, you, when it's on the top, it's going to be a sort of navigating button for the screen, for radio, for media, for quick setup, for the track, a quick button for the start button for setup if you want to set up anything you can do this for file or tuning to left and right or volume left and right or push down for the volume all that things and then if you press this button everything will shift back to the what do you call it the aircon switch so instead of this power for the radio this is power for the aircon actually so power on and power off just like that then your left your right is to change your temperature basically so then when you do the temperature First thing, you have front windscreen for the windscreen blast, rear windscreen for the demister, uh, recirculation or auto climate, which up to you, and low, that means we are on lowest setting for the temperature, as you can see here. And then if you click sync, both temperatures will follow the driver's side. But if you either click unsync or turn this, it will, it will be two different temperatures. Fan speed go up and down. This is the, um, the air con sort of direction for top, bottom. AC, non AC, driver only, that means no aircon on the left, only the aircon on the driver's side. Pretty easy. And then this part, just the volume again, or the temperature. In the center, we have the hazard light, just push that, hazard light comes on, push that, hazard light comes off. And your aircon switch, you can switch this all the way to left, switch this all the way to right, switch this all the way to left to switch off the air vents if you don't want it. All right. Now the air vents is done, we can look at the uh, system over here. So to change anything the system, it's all touch screen basically. As uh, always, you do have these direct buttons if you want to go through anything, but easy way is just go through the touch button. First thing, we have the menu. We can change the widget on the left, on the right, and edit the home icon if you wish to. So if you want to change anything, if you don't want the radio on the left, you can change the clock and all that things. But otherwise, this is fine for me. And then to go into the system, you can also go all menus to see all the information. The first one is the hybrid. We can see the hybrid driving, energy flow over here with, with where the charging or the uh, information. And then you can see the average consumption. Again, this is the brand new unit, so consumption doesn't look great. Phone, we can change, we can connect to Bluetooth. Basically, just click OK. Then you can start searching the Kia name on your phone to connect to the Kia Bluetooth. And then if your, if your phone supports wireless phone, wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, this particular screen does support the wireless uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That means just click OK. If you want to use the wireless Android Auto, you can use that. If you do have a bigger screen that doesn't uh, do wireless Android Auto, you can also connect to the cable on the left, which is your USB charging cable, to use the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Um, or if you don't want to use wireless Apple CarPlay, you can also use the cable over here. So just click that. 
and then phone projection it's pretty much the same you can use the usb cable underneath or uh, well as apple carplay to display your apple carplay and android logo on the screen for your music and everything uh, voice memo you can re you can um, connect the, you can record the voice and all that things on this particular device if you wish to and radio you can change the radio stations on the kia vehicles so the radio you can first thing you can change the band to fm or am first thing then you get the favorite list so that allows you to change all your favorite list if you wish to i will click through the favorite list if you wish to and then you can click list that's all the lists that all the stations that's available in this particular area and you have the name on top of that and then you can do the program type or station that means it will to line up on each of the stations if you do want to listen to a certain station just press that you can start listening to this certain station and then uh, when you drive the vehicle you can also use this button over here to go up and down between the station list if you wish to menu so that allows you to change a few settings first thing is the display off that permanently you can just switch off the screen but your 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 your, your video or your radio is still playing um, otherwise just tap the button to bring back the screen you can manually tune fm that means you can just select left and right to a certain particular uh, number on the on the fm you can scan the dab or fm if you wish to and then you to hand do the FM switching, all those things. These two things doesn't doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's to change your radio stations if you wish to. While you drive, you can also use this button or use the button on the steering to change your radio stations. Next one, media. So if your phone is connected with Bluetooth, you can use media and that allows us to change Bluetooth or USB music, Android Auto, or Apple CarPlay to change whatever the music source you have. Um, again, when you drive the vehicle, you can also click the mode button to change different um, source sort of thing. And then when you, click, when you click the mode button, as you can see, you can also enable the mode button. So you want to select everything. That means when you press the mode button while you drive, it's going to go through all these uh, options. If you don't select any of these options, it's not going to go through any, uh, any of the functions when you drive the vehicle. And then other one, you can also customize the button uh, and customize the start button on the steering and also on the button here first customize the button on audio this is the button over here that means you can per personalize this to quiet mode or projection if you tap this button it's going to go into one of the selections you choose if it's none that means you tap this button it's not going to do anything second button you can personalize the start button on your steering control so press this button over here then it will go to a privacy mode pri um, quiet mode and all that things again this is up to you you can choose whichever you like all those things to personalize all your buttons next we are going to the quiet mode that's basically a sort of quiet mode or your music and all that things will be volume or decrease so for the seats only so your rear speakers will not be engaged for the quiet mode it's quite handy if you have a younger passenger uh, sleeping at the back if in that case and settings you can set up the screen display and other things sound that allows you to change different sound for the uh, speed dependent volume so at the moment standard that means your volume your speed goes high your volume goes a little bit higher you can see that you can do volume limitation on startup in case you you your previous person who is driving the car it's gonna quite be quite loud you can enable this if you like to you can disable the beep or none beep if you like to position that's the sound position you already know that equalizer again this is up to you or you press center everything goes back to normal guidance this is your uh, voice guidance um, information of volume you can change left and right if you wish to and radio noise control you can do medium or range and all other things so that allows you to reduct uh, reduced um, you know, noise in area with the wake um, you know reception if you wish to Next one, connected devices. So you can add your devices, you can delete your device, you can do phone projection device, add new and other things as well. So that's to personalize this button. And brightness, uh, sorry, display, you can change the brightness or auto brightness. That means at night, it will automatically change. At daytime, it will automatically change back to that. And blue light, that you can do the blue light filter if you wish to. Otherwise, as long as the light looks okay, you don't have to do anything, basically. You can also have screen saver in case you switch off the screen and all power is off then nothing is displayed you can say like no or you can say digital analog or an sorry digital clock analog clock when the screen is completely off that's again that's up to you um, 
keep the rear camera on so that means when you put on reverse the rear camera will pop up and you put, start when you're slowly driving forward you can see then switch on the rear view camera as well the infotainment on and off so you can switch the infotainment on uh, when the vehicle is turned off uh, so that means when the vehicle is turned off and the uh, infotainment screen the radio is still playing until you lock the vehicle that's really up to you but it does drain a small battery um, basically that's again that's your choice buttons that's to personalize those buttons we've already done that before in general you can change the general inf or you can see the general information the most important part is probably date and time you can do gps or non-gps you can do time zone you can do daylight saving take and take if you wish to wi-fi uh, you can change the wi-fi connection uh, so you can use the wi-fi to uh, for the phone projection um, again climate you can change your climate settings internal air recirculation so that's active on washer fluid use that means when you start using the washer fluid um, the the washer fluid smell will not go into the vehicle if it's on so that's quite handy auto ventilation you can do the auto dehumidifier if you wish to defrog options or automatic defrog and um, auto de defrost um, in, in the cold weather so that's all the settings over here then we can swipe left that has menus that allows you to scan this um, code to read the menus online if you wish to otherwise you'll find your owner's menu in the glove box pretty easy and the rest part will be pretty easy um, you get USB-C charging you get the USB-A charging and US um, the 12 volt socket for charging uh, some versions will have the wireless charging pad and leaf and your gear selector is pretty straightforward just go reverse neutral drive then go forward and all that things when you put on reverse your camera will automatically pop up then you can see the camera angles you can see the reverse parking sensor everything you can tap this button to see a slightly um how do you say straight ahead um camera or use this to see the rear view camera you can change the settings in case you don't want the uh, lines or anything like that otherwise the lines are perfect for, for those things and this is to switch on your camera in case you're going uh, you case your camera didn't switch on switch or you switch off the camera if you wish to and this is to engage or disengage the parking sensors if you wish to and then additionally we have auto hold so we have the handbrake over here so you can release by push down or uh, switch on by pulling it on you have the handbrake light additionally you can enable the auto hold that means you have auto hold function here ready to engage once you tap that button when you drive forward and then when you come to a complete stop the vehicle will hold your brake for you so you don't have to roll forward backwards and you can release your foot off the pedal then if you do want to move forward again or if the green light turns on again you just tap the accelerator then the vehicle will move forward uh, releasing your handbrake at the same time so that's how to use the auto hold next part we have the center console in terms of storage information so you can push this back to have empty storage over here or you can push this backwards to push and push you have two individual cup holders just like that and the storage bed at the back is pretty simple there's no spe nothing special about that last bit is the light on the top you can engage the reading light by pressing that button and disengage just by pressing that you can engage the door light as well that means if one of the doors unlocked then your your um, light will come on and the doors are locked now you don't have the light anymore so you can engage this or disengage this if you like it or not so yeah i think that's pretty much all about the functions on this particular vehicle and again uh, if you enjoyed the video enjoy the content please make sure you subscribe and like that would be really helpful for the channel to grow and uh, if you would like to um, buy Kia vehicles in Auckland, New Zealand, please make sure you contact Abby Pukui for your future purchase. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.